Alrighty then, hey guys, what's up? It is Sizzent here. It's a long video, so we'll keep the intro very short. This is part two of a two-part video, linked to the first one in the description. So in the first part, what we did was all of the structural stuff. Here we're going to be doing all of the finishing touches, such as the edges and the details and the such like that. So without further ado, let's make a cup of coffee and dive right into it. So the first step in finishing off all of the edges was the armholes. So that what I've done here is gone over it with a pen just so that I can see the seam allowance that I've got here. And that's gonna let me know where the actual armhole needs to be. So basically I'm just transferring that through with a pen because it's not very clearly visible on the linen and I don't wanna be flying blind here. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is wet forming. So I've got my sponge absolutely soaking wet and I'm making sure that this soaks through all of the layers of goat hide. With that little bib up on top, you can see I'm getting right in there and making sure that all of the leather is very wet and malleable. After it's had a little bit of time to soak in, I'm just coming through with some snips and cutting a few little bits that's gonna make it a little bit easier to fold over with my bone shaper here. I don't know how this is all going in terms of the way that you're supposed to do these things, but this is what I found that worked for me. When it was folding over, it really wanted to spread open, so I needed to cut these little channels to make it cooperate. After I folded it over, I'm just clipping it with various fabric clips and bulldog clips in order to get it to keep the shape. There's no glue on this yet, it is just wet forming the edges of the sleeve so that the leather is naturally going to want to sit in this folded over form that's going to give us that nice fold around the armhole. And I just put it around a big tub of something or other that I had to set. Once it's had some time to set, it's time to get out the Leathercraft cement. And for this process, I basically just unclipped it one little bit at a time. I didn't want it to lose its shape too much. And I didn't wait until this was completely dry for me to put the glue on because I was worried that it would get a little bit too stiff by then for me to unfold. So I'm absolutely slathering the glue on here, giving it a little bit of time to get tacky. And you can see that I'm using a foam brush and also the end of a comb. It was just a bit of metal wire it was the most convenient thing I had to hand. I'm um, just making sure to get in there and really spread it around deeply inside all of the cracks there and where the linen has started to come away from the goat hide I'm making sure to peel that back and just get a ton of glue in there and that's going to hold this linen lining in better as well. Now there are some points here like this French seam underneath the bib you can see there are a lot of layers there and it's taken quite a bit to get Firstly, taking quite a bit to get the glue in there and then quite a bit to hold it down. So if you are doing something like this, make sure that you've got a really big heavy duty bulldog clip that's going to hold it in. And do make sure to get the glue in between the different layers of leather where that bib is sitting over the structural pieces. And again, as I'm going around the circle, just using the bulldog clips and the fabric clips to hold it all in place. I want it to be circular and so I'm just going to sit it around this by way of a template. After I'd given the glue some time to dry, it was time to put the stitches around the edge here. So I'm just using a set of calipers to roughly mark. I believe I went about 10 mil in from the edge, but again, your mileage may vary. After that, I used an altered punch. So this used to be a four mil punch. I took two of the prongs out. So we're punching eight mil distance stitching holes here. And you can see that I'm doing a similar sort of thing where I'm making sure that there are bulldog clips and fabric clips holding most of it and I'm only unclipping one tiny little part at a time so that I can work with what I need while not altering the form of the rest of it and not letting it come unraveled. Now 
and of course working right the way around the armhole, even down to the back and to the underarm where it is just the two layers of goat hide that is folded over, making sure to get some nice even stitch spacing all the way down there to that bottom French seam. Next, I decided to tackle the front raw edges. So I've got a long strip of kangaroo hide and all I'm doing is stitching that front sides together down the front. What we're going to do after this is I'm going to fold it back over so that we've got a seam running down the middle and then on the inside it will be lined, so to speak, with the kangaroo hide. And this I did just with a brown thread and a six mil spacing for my stitching holes because this isn't going to be visible. This is all going to be folded over so that we can hide those raw edges neatly away. I wasn't really sure if this was the best way to go about it, but I thought that this was probably my best shot at getting that similar sort of spaced stitching uh, along the front seams that matches the French seams on the side and the back. So this is what I went. So here we have that kangaroo hide folded back around with the raw edges hidden and you can see that lovely little seam that's just going to be running down the side here. So after we used the calipers to mark where the stitching holes are and punching them of course it's simply a matter of running down there with some thread. You can see here really clearly that the bib on the front left has departed from the side but that's fine that's all going to be covered by that big circular thingy on the front of it that I really should probably figure out a name for. Is it like a is it like a cover? Is it meant to be some some manner of panel? I'm honestly not sure. And here you can see me working on the same thing for the collar. Now, as far as I could tell, the collar was all meant to be one piece, i.e. the lining didn't seem to take a step at the corner. So what I did here was cut out a roughly square U-shape 
of kangaroo hide. I rounded the edges to match the curvature on the edges of the collar. I've done the exact same thing here. I'm stitching them right sides together and then afterwards we are going to flip them over. So to flip them over, I do soak the leather in a fair bit of water. Again, it just makes it more malleable and it doesn't seem to affect, especially the kangaroo hide, which is chrome tanned, it doesn't affect the rigidity of that too much once it has dried out. So that has been my process and honestly, it's worked out pretty well for me.
So here we can see me beveling the edges of this front circular attachment after I've already glued it down because I'm very dumb and very bad at orders of operation. So naturally, if you are making your own version of this or indeed any leather project where the edges are going to be seen, bevel them and burnish them before you glue them on to literally the front and center of the garment that you're making. Um, this was eh, this this was very silly of me, but you know I salvaged it, and I feel like that's an important skill as well, being able to ad lib and fix up your little screw up. So I just used a, an old scrap as a back piece here so that the burnisher didn't wind up leaving marks all over the front of the jerkin. And, and look, honestly, it came out kind of okay towards the end. So uh, no harm, no foul. I didn't film a lot of the process for making the buckles because, ta-da, they're exactly the same as they were on the braces. It's like that in the game as well. So I figured that because the armor in the game repeats a lot of the same design motifs, and low key, that's one of the things that I really like about it, I would do the same thing here and make sure that the buckles were the identical shape and size. So real quick crash course on what I did with the buckles. Cut them out, beveled the edges, sanded the edges here with a little attachment on my Dremel, you can do this with a bit of sandpaper and a block. I just had the Dremel handy and I always like the excuse to get it out. Make sure that you wax your burnishing wheel as well. I've used way too much beeswax there and I've just gone over the edges here just to try and make them look a little bit less fuzzy. I didn't do the greatest job here. And then next I cut out the pattern for the sleeves. I call them sleeves, they're really just the little puffy loops. Basically, uh, initially I tried to do these as separate strips all attached to the sleeves individually, and that was a monumental failure. So I went back, drafted this basic pattern. It's just kind of a rectangle with a curve at the top and some slashes down the bottom. I believe, incidentally, that this is closer to how the real thing was done by, say, the land or any other puffed cut and slashed sleeves from history. So there you go. After cutting out the pattern and dyeing the leather comes the beveling step. So yes, I beveled every one of these little lines just to give the sleeves a little bit more dimension when they're all puffed out. And yes, I went through and beveled the rear side of the leather as well. I think that it lends it a better shape. So not pictured on camera, of course, was the dyeing step and also the stitching. I just did some four mil spacing, I believe, on the stitches, about four mil in from the edge, and I just stitched in rows down each one of those little cut sleeve puffs. And then after that, it is time for attaching it to the jerkin proper. We're getting there, folks. 
So for this, I knew that my stitch spacing around the sleeve edge was eight mil. So I went down the sleeve pattern with an eight mil punch and punched my way through. This of course still required a lot of all work because again, these are all three dimensional shapes and I can make my best laid plans but at the end of the day, you gotta get in there with an awl, you gotta make sure that the holes are lined up properly. And really look, as long as the thread gets through and it looks good at the end, then, well, then it turned out just. I'm so close, I can taste it. I think, I think that this will be the night that I actually finish it. So all we have to do are the buckles down the front. Both sleeves are on, this front bit is on, all of the ends are trimmed and glued. We've already had to do one repair so far. I've got all of my buckles laid out here. We've done the first test one to make sure that it's sitting in the correct spot on the jerkin, but all I have to do is mount the buckles on half of them, rivet them on, and then put a coat of Neat's foot oil over it, and that's it. I'm done. So, let's do it. So the method that I'm utilizing is a very scientific, just aim by eye, just gonna punch out a hole and then trim it to get this rectangle. Simply take your strap, fold it over itself. I'm just aligning it with the uh, angles in the end of the strap. That's just an easy way to align it. Your mileage may vary. I'm just folding it neatly in half, taking my punch, eyeballing it around about there, I reckon. Now, the only thing I'm doing differently than last time on the braces is I'm just cutting the aisles with a knife. And in theory, that should mean that the clasp is gonna sit a little bit neater and tidier. So you can see that's got plenty of room to rotate all the way. Some of the buckles that I made for the bracer weren't that great. So doing it this way, I think will make it more comfortable. So after this, we've just got to put a couple of stitches through here, pop some glue on them and carry on.
now a look at all of the pieces that I've made so far together. This has been one of the more complex pieces that I've made full stop, but I'm really happy with the fit. I'm extremely pleased with how well this has come out. On the back is a little bit bunched up. Pattern could have been a little bit better, but the fit, the finish, I can move around freely in it. I can stretch. It has that really satisfying leather creak. I think the colours have come out great. And now we continue on to the next part of this project, which will be the waist belt and the two cross belts with the little bandolier, the sword scabbards and the little pouch. So I do hope that you will join me. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Making this was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen part one yet, please do feel free to go and watch that. Thank you so much for watching. You guys take it easy and I will see you in the next one.